Welcome back to the In The Blues Tone podcast. This is our first in-house one for 2020, so welcome back, Dr. Rick. I uh, know, it's Happy New Year, folks. It's awesome to uh, be here with you. Looks like uh, Santa's been uh, good to me, but also more so to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Santa got a thing <laughs> going on. Yeah, uh, look, it's it's been a while since I had a bit of a uh, show and tell, so um, I thought I might bring out some of these guitars and, and uh, show you what I've been up to, the naughtiness. Before we get into what you got, uh, let's just, just explain to people who might be new to the channel the transition from the single coil ma master of the Telecaster yeah. to playing like Slash now with humbucker, <laughs> nothing but humbucker <laughs> guitars. What's the deal? Yeah, it's been a crazy, a crazy uh, transformation, I don't have to say. Look, there's no doubt that it started at uh, Gitcon when mm. we were there. And I just um, I played quite a few guitars and I bought the Framus Phil, Phil X, which is now a bit of a collector's item because uh, Phil X has left Framus after five or six really good years and he's gone over to uh, Gibson. Um, so, yeah, I guess just hearing humbuckers for the first time is not dark and woolly and yeah. and whatnot. And humbuckers that respond to your volume knob and humbuckers that respond to your attack. So it's been a massive transformation. I, I read somewhere the other day that a great Les Paul sounds like a telly on steroids. Oh, and that's what it, it yeah. sounds like that. You know, the PAFs um, really weren't a high output pickup. They had lots of tops. Yeah. Um, and so I guess these three examples here are... Oh, gee. It's three. Three. It's, yeah, <laughs> it is. Are examples of uh, humbuckers that do that. Yeah. Um, oh, I am incredibly embarrassed to have these. I mean... Uh, no, no, know, two of them look great. <laughs> There's one I lovingly refer to as the Liberace guitar, even though it doesn't. It's not all in white. It, it's very, no, that very, very guitar, flamboyant. I'm I am assured by the manufacturer that they do make them for men as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll just hang on to it for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, shall we show the folks at home? Yeah, start with maybe the one you've had the longest. Do you want to go that way or the yeah. newest to the? Oldest? No, 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 no. The one I've had the longest. All right, uh, would be good. Oh, yeah, it was this one. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> can I show it on this camera? Yeah, that should hopefully work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, this is a, um, a Framus Panthera Supreme from uh, the Framus. Uh, it's master built from the Framus Custom Shop. Uh, so, it's, look, it's unashamedly their take on a Les Paul. It's a mahogany back and mahogany neck, and um, it's got a... Uh, quadruple A flame maple <laughs> oh, top. Oh, wow. So one extra. Yeah, one extra A just for A. E. Um, yes, and uh, tiger stripe ebony fingerboard uh, and a pair of uh, Seymour Duncan pickups. It, in the bridge, it's a custom custom hmm. and uh, in the neck, it's a uh, El Nuco Pro 2 humbucker. So neither of them are heavy metal. Yeah. Um, they're sort of moderate output. Um, there's uh, separate volumes for each uh, pickup and a master tone, which also splits the coils as well. So, um, yeah, look, it, it is a, a beautiful sounding guitar. Um, I contacted Framus after, after Gitcon and um, I arranged the purchase through them. Cool. It comes in this beautiful leather gig bag, which we can show later. Yeah. Which I think, I don't even know. Uh, I don't even want to know how much it costs, but <laughs> it's ridiculously expensive. I mean, you, know, you can pay three or four hundred dollars for a leather gig bag. You know, I've seen the top of the line ones by Levi's. I think they're called or Levi's. Yeah, yeah Levi's. Levy. I think. Yeah, yeah I, I could be wrong about the yeah. name pronunciation. Anyway, yeah, um, they're really they're very expensive, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is uh, this is that beast. Uh, it's got yeah locking heads on it, and it's just beautifully engineered. Tone Pro's uh, bridge and tail piece. Um, so it's lovely. I honestly feel like these are some of the best engineered guitars. I've like I haven't played one because I'm a lefty, unfortunately. But from what I can just see, picking them, picking it up, yeah. it's just beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's it's uh, just the it's German engineering at its best. Yeah. So you know, it addresses a lot of those sort of uh, issues with other sorts of guitars. Mm -hmm. The neck angle is nowhere near as uh, acute. Um, the string pulls a lot straighter. Yeah, it's it's still got a little bit of a kink on the D and the G strings, but it's a lot straighter. 
Um, yeah, I was going to ask whether or not the new uh, SG from Gibson would be, you know, a similar sort of instrument to the Phil X one from Framus. It would be interesting to yeah, find out. Yeah, I think so. I would France. doubt. I would doubt whether it would have the, the really thick body that the Framus yeah, ones had, okay. and also the 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 neck on my Phil XG is uh, it's like a fifty eight Les Paul. It's really thick. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. a big thick neck. So it would really surprise me if uh, Gibson did do one like that. Yeah. It'd be awesome if they did. Yeah, that that's the one criticism of it is that weight, yeah, the neck heavy right. thing. It's just yeah, a, and if they made a really big, thick, heavy neck, it would only make that worse. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I remember talking to Phil X at GitCon and him saying, "I love SGs, but um, uh, they're just the neck's too thin and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff." So, uh, I guess what attracted me to the XG was it addressed all those sort of shortcomings, yeah, or perceived cool. shortcomings. I mean, the SG is a classic guitar, but if you want one that sort of stays in tune, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, look, this is beautifully done. They've got this yeah, thing called great. invisible fret technology, which I, I don't know what it exactly does, but it, it, the feel of it is absolutely amazing. It's mm. just incredible. The each fret end just looks this nice polished little little dome. So it's um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Do you know if they pleck the frets? Is that something? They yes. Do they, yeah, do. they do. Okay. Cool. They they, they pleck them. Uh, um, it just it feels great. It feels beautiful. like a like a sports car, really. Mm. And you've come to terms with how it looks, so it's a win-win. <laughs> well, um, and as people in the channel know, when I play, I close my eyes anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. It could be a Hello Kitty guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so that led into the the gas of the this other PRS as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, at GitCon, um, we had lovely uh, Gene uh, yep. Noon from uh, PRS. And uh, one of the beautiful guitars I played there was a single cut 594. We made a video of that, folks. Um, and uh, yeah, I look, I've, I really enjoyed it. Again, the pickups underwound. They're called 58, 58, 15 low turns. Okay. So they're just underwound PAF style pickups. <laughs> um, and so when I got back, um, I saw this uh, on one of the Facebook pages. And the guy said, uh, oh, no, I'm up for trades. And so there was a guitar that I had that I just, I, I, I'd i like the look of, but I never really bonded with. Mm-hmm. And so we just did a straight swap. And uh, and this beastie came. So this is a 594 double cut yeah. with a, a 10 top. So um, it's, uh, again, I'll show you on the camera over there. If yeah. It picks up this 10 top nonsense. Um but uh, yeah, look, it's 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 a lovely, beautiful tone guitar. Um, it's got the coil taps on both the um, both the tone controls, and the the coil taps that uh, so many of them don't really work that well. Mm-hmm. Like the ones on the framers are okay, um, and you've got a coil tap on your uh, SE, yeah, your SE. Yeah. Is it what's it like? I, I don't use it ever. Yeah, it, it thins yeah. it out way too much. My pickups are really bright anyway yes and not the thickest sounding yeah so yeah. when you it just yeah it gets way too anemic for, yeah, for what i yeah. like look i i'd have to say um i've used it a handful of times live with the single calls and it's better than i've used previously mm. but i do find myself subconsciously thinking when can i get back to humbug and mode yeah I'll, just click it and and it all comes back in it's the fullness of sound that yeah they almost need to engineer that somehow where if you split the coils it doesn't drop volume because yeah. inherently the, the output of the split coil or single coil mode isn't going to be anywhere near as, yeah, as loud. So yeah. I think it's more almost that that gets sort of puts you on edge when you it hear, does. That, hear yeah, that yeah. volume drop. But yeah. Look, I think this is definitely an improvement on that. Yeah. It's not like, oh, where did my sound go? <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's still, yeah, I, I, don't know, I think I'm for, I'm gone forever from single coil guitars. It's yeah. weird. So how does this compare maybe to, to your other guitar in, in terms of its humbucker tone though? Is it... From what I remember hearing, maybe slightly a thicker sound, possibly. Yeah, it's just a little bit uh, firmer through the mids. Yeah, but it's still got that lovely sort of top end. Mm-hmm. I'm, again, um, you know, my prejudice against humbuckers was that you just lose the snap. You know. Yeah. I, I like to do that hybrid sort of picking thing, and um, you know where. You... Yeah. And and it still rewards you with that snap. You, know, yeah. you can really hear that um, that. So, um, yeah, it was really cool, wasn't it? Uh, but anyway, it would sound awesome if it were plugged in. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so again, it does have that that lovely snap that again I, I always thought was it was missing from humbuckers. Uh, so yeah, it's probably a bit warmer and firmer in the mids. It's a it's quite a thick body. It's it's much um, it's much thicker than the usual uh, PRS um, core line, I guess you'd call it. So I wonder whether that contributes to um, you yeah. know a little bit more in the mids. Um, but that's the tone wood debate for another day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's got these phase three locking tuners. There's a special little extra collar on the tuner thing here, which uh, Mr. PRS says um, enhances the sustain and the uh, vibration transfer to the neck. And I've never tried to take them off to do the AB. But uh, yeah, well, I'll well, get some close up shots of that. And yeah, overlay it. yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Be good. But uh, look, at the end of the day, the locking tuners just make life a whole lot easier uh, as far as you know, quick string changes and whatnot. And these, once you get the hang of these phase threes, they're pretty good. Yeah, um, they work out uh, pretty well. So that's been my main gig guitar uh, probably over the last six months or so. Yeah, I would say. I've just, yeah, just, I haven't seen you play yeah much else. To be yeah, honest, yeah, look, it, it recently, just, it just uh, it's just been super reliable, rock yeah. solid, and and uh, yeah, so a good range of tones you can get out of it too. You can get almost some funky sort of rhythm sounds out of it, and um, they are an easy guitar to play too. Uh, it almost yeah. spoils you, like yeah, it does. <laughs> how easy some of them are to play. Yeah. Maybe not every PRS out there. I mean, I played a couple that were a bit of a struggle. It was more yeah. of a setup thing, but yeah, yeah, that's why I fell in love with mine. It was just too easy. It is. Yeah, I know Ryan just got a PRS uh, studio. Yeah, you know, I heard that the, thing. Yeah, it's little, great. Um, yeah, so of course. And he was telling me. I mean, yeah, he plays like an absolute mother anyway. But um, he's saying that it's almost too easy, not in a good way. He says that you don't have to think. Whereas um, he, I think he's saying that he prefer a guitar. You got to fight a bit. Yeah, then you got to think yeah, about what you're playing. He said that a bit once before, maybe about a. Was it about his Strat possibly, or he was talking about some other guitar where he he likes, or maybe his three thirty five where he, he likes a bit of a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. I oh, know the three thirty five was. Uh, I think he he just said no. That's the tone, oh. so I don't have to play that. Because oh, the time right. is so he awesome. Yeah, maybe it was his strat he was talking yeah. about, possibly. He's such a wanker, isn't he? Anyway. I can't play any of mine properly. <laughs> and then, good and, God, and then, man. You're, uh, this this guy has done a 180 since over the last, I don't know. I've never seen you play a Les Paul, but no. I heard from a reliable source you had one maybe 20 years ago. I did have one. <laughs> I had one a long time ago. It was a cherry... Oh, no, it's sort of a deep wine red. Yeah. Les Paul. And I liked the look of it and I liked the whole vibe of it's a Les Paul. But for some reason, I just – I really couldn't play it. I yeah. just found the tilt back, the pitch of the neck and the tunematic bridge, just everything felt weird. And you'd always say, oh, just play for a while, you'll get used to it. And yeah. I'd go, no, 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 no. Yeah, that was no. the thing. You always talk about the neck tilt. And I've never noticed that on any of – these kind of guitars before yeah, i've never looked yeah. never noticed it yeah, it's weird you just it's get just, used to it i think it's just shows you how neurotic i am folks i'm very <laughs> neurotic um but yeah i've just been i've just been listening to them again for some <laughs> stupid reason and 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 ryan actually had one that um uh i'm not quite sure how he just said oh grab that you know yeah, and yeah. Play, play it for a while then you'll get out of your system and the trouble is i didn't oh um, and and he, you know, he's so he's so generous. He just says, "Oh, just just hang on to it." You know, it's mm -hmm. it can be in our personal collection. But I've got this issue, and this is all other thing we could talk in a podcast. Is I don't like to borrow guitars because I um I really like knowing they're mine, and I can yeah, yeah okay sort of do stuff with them. And yeah, uh, I was talking about a mate of mine, Marcel, who's a great guitar player, and he's he's the same that people say, "Oh, you know, just grab that and." And you, you might grab it and have a bit of a play, but it's this weird thing of have, wanting to own something. So you don't get to give it back and you can do what you want to it. You yeah, know, yeah, load yeah. the pickups, roads the pickups, change the intonation, yeah. put strap locks on it, all that sort of crap. So this is all just rationalising bad behaviour, folks. <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, for oh probably the last two or three months, um, 
Liz Paul's been burning a hole through my head. And I've actually not been the enabler up until the day we were there. I, no, I was like, I was trying to no. talk you out of it. No, said, you keep saying, do no, you won't like it. You You've already no, got no. a couple of really great humbug right. guitars. Yeah, you won't. You won't. You know, it's, you, you were telling me all these things and I'm going, yeah, yeah, you're right. I want it. I want it. This is terrible. <laughs> this, this, this angel on my shoulder and the devil on the other and the angel saying, come on, mate. You know, you've got humbug guitars that are awesome. And the devil's going, yeah, they are awesome. But they're not a Gibson Les Paul. Yeah. See, that's the thing, man. There's that's something to be said about that exact statement. People will buy all different kinds of guitars and then they'll either get a Fender or, or a, or a yeah, Gibson or they whatever. That's they'll where it comes for a while, down to. And then they'll say, and, and look, I, you know, I've got no idea, but I'm going to put it out there that I wondered whether um, Gibson approaching Phil after, you know, lots of years touring the world with Farmer's Guitars yeah. and said, look, we'd love you to play our guitars. It's just something that goes back into your DNA from when you first started playing or even before you started playing, you were a fan. Yeah. You just see people playing these iconic guitars. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. And it's just part of you that says, I want a slice of that action. It's, you know, it's pure vanity. It's crazy. Yeah. There's that plus they're also probably pretty local to him as opposed to, you know, a company overseas from the US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I assume yeah. he lives in the US, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he lives in Los Angeles. Okay, cool, cool. Um, but uh, you you know that look I get once <laughs> that snowball has gathered sufficient momentum. It's it, it's almost the opposite of what I expect, and I've learned this a few times. There's a couple of times where you you've bought guitars, and it's the last time I thought you weren't interested in your tally with the relic tally. Yeah, and sitting there, I'm like, you're not enjoying this, but he was completely like. Just <laughs> playing and not not smiling, and I'm like, oh, he's not. He doesn't want this. And I, I remember I made some sort of comment like, oh, do you want me to get something else? And you're like, no, nah, I'll take it. I was like, what? <laughs> what? How did that even happen? So uh, I don't know. It happens, man. I think there's, and I've probably said this before. There's a PhD thesis in what happens, what happens in the psychology of a guitar nut. Yeah. You know, I I, I don't mind telling people. You know, like. Um, I just unfortunately eat, sleep, and live and breathe these bloody things. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I love my family, my wife. I especially love her for supporting this habit. <laughs> she never watches these two, which is fine. But uh, you know, and I and I I do enjoy my job when I'm there. But this is the stuff that keeps me awake at night. Yeah, yeah. So the process is probably the same for you as it is for most people you got to justify it and then you've got to kind of come to terms with the, the price of it yes. as well yeah uh because i yeah. mean you got it you did get a great deal so it yeah, wasn't yeah. like it was no that's true you know, right yeah. at the end of that spectrum yeah, for but. sure look yeah that's that's that process but it just seems that um all rational thought goes out the door yeah it does um, especially when you don't own a gibson what kind of serious guitar player doesn't know, have one? I, well Exactly, that's and the sort of stuff. To be fair too, like if you had bought one of these maybe five years ago, the, the when they had a lot of quality control issues yeah. possibly, you yeah. might not have got as good an instrument. Like the one I've got, which is like a lower end model, the, this uh, classic uh, special, sorry, the yeah. 2P90s. Yeah. This plays just as good as my old custom shop, yeah. straight off the shelf. I've not even changed the strings. Yeah. I haven't yeah. adjusted anything on it and it plays great. So yeah. um, I actually wrote an article about uh, their quality control and how I'm lucky enough to test a lot of lefties and you played a lot mm. of righties as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not many duds. No, no. Look, they certainly have, since they've filed for bankruptcy, you know, something had to give. Either they'd just be swallowed up and gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, notwithstanding that terrible play authentic fiasco, yeah. total disaster. Oh, their marketing team, they need, yeah. they need some new they should, marketing. They need to hire us. Fender get it. That's so right, man. Yeah. They just do. They nail it. They do. Whether you like their guitars or not, whoever yeah. does their marketing, are like oh, they're great. It's wicked. They can yeah. create create the vibe. And there's a <laughs> there's one out for 2020. The custom shop ones with um, a guy called Mike Lewis, who's a oh, great okay. player. Yeah. He's a real rootsy, cool um, sort of player, and they just know the, uh, the strings to pull, don't they? Yeah, and yeah. and the just those little points that that make us tingle. Yeah, and, no, you're uh, right. Yeah, and they got so many great players on there. You know, yeah, they can pull yeah, from as well. Yeah. I mean, Gibson are like that. I, actually, I'll give them some credit. Some of their more recent videos have actually been pretty good. They're very yes. simple videos, but yeah. that's all you need when you got a good yeah, product. Yeah, 
you know Carter's vintage guitars. You watch that uh, YouTube channel? I've heard of it. I yeah. don't know if I'm sub. It's in. To it. It's a shop in Nashville. It has all oh. sorts of great yeah, guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't they had um, Rich Shaw playing the um, Sweet Home Alabama Strat, oh, um, wow. and um, a guy called Jason Isbell, who is awesome, yeah, great wow. so, uh, singer songwriter guitarist, playing a couple of old burst uh, Les Pauls hmm. and uh, Joey Landreth, and all these awesome players. Yeah. So. You know, again, I was, what am I going to do? I can't fight it. <laughs> just <laughs> give into it. All right, you got to rip this beast out from its, Why uh, not? from its stand over here. Why not? And we'll talk a bit about the weight too and maybe how it compares to, to some of the others because one thing, you know, you got to wear, be wary if you got a bad neck or back, you yeah. don't want to play three sets with it. No, no, With absolutely. most Les Pauls at absolutely. least. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is a 58 um, uh, VOS from the custom shop. Uh, with um, custom buckers, El Nico 3 unpotted. Apparently the unpotting aspect um, makes the top end a bit more open and mm. I'm not sure, I, possibly. They just they do sound great though. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, got a lot of treble. Great. treble, lot, lot of treble. Yeah. And, and, and the taper of the volume pots is, is really usable as well. Um, you can get some great, you know, cleanish rhythm sounds and yeah. just dial it up so... It is um, it is fantastic, and how long were we at Sky? Three hours playing yeah. all sorts of guitars. Poor I was, Shane, I was smashed. He still end. got he still <laughs> got tinnitus from uh, the same four boring blues licks played over and over and over again. Give me that one. Give me that one. Give me that one. No, this you know. was the this is a good process to talk about too because we don't just go in there and play a guitar randomly. It's yeah. like this is the one I like. Let's compare it to some known quantities yeah, exactly. as well as some other options. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, you have known knowns and, and unknown knowns and yeah. known unknowns. But, yeah, and we've got to give uh, credit to Sky as well. They, mm -hmm. I think, you know, they they know us well enough to just leave us alone, to yeah. lock us in the <laughs> They room. give us the keys and they do. help yourself. Yeah, yeah, so, pretty yeah. much. And it's awesome. And, you know, that, that's the way to buy guitars. You yeah. Know, you never... You don't want some creepy guy cringing over your shoulder. No. <laughs> you want to take it today, kid? Um, so... Uh, it's great, and they mm. just let us come to our own sort of decisions. Um, I will say that the the PRS, the DGT, David Grissom yep. trim model, came really, really close to this. Um, but you know, I've got so the three di PRS. Guitars. Yeah, the difference between this one and the, the other PRS was it was slightly fatter, but it still had it still had nice top end. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that's that elusive combination that's. Evidently hard to nail. Yeah. My um, Flying V, you also tried just for a comparison in right-handed. Yeah, yeah. And that had more of a, a more of a uniform sort of sound through yeah. it. It didn't have that prominent sort of big, thick yeah. Les Paul kind of vibe to yeah, it at all. Yeah. So it was a different sound again, which I, I really still like that. It's, yeah, but yeah, it's great. Yeah, there was a clear difference between yeah. each of the pickups. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, having said that, I reckon in a live, loud band mix... You probably couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> Do you reckon you could tell the difference between these in a blind test? Uh, I reckon I, I could definitely tell the difference between this one and yep. that. Yep. Um, but the Framus and this one are much closer. Yeah, we might have yeah. to do that video as a blind test. Why not? See if we can. We'll do it once it hits twenty thousand hits. We'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, there we uh, go. What it is, but uh, yeah, this one and, and the Framus are quite similar. The PRS is a yeah, it's a whole different ball of wax. Mm -hmm. But um, so talk about uh, a little bit about the weight of yours, because uh, one of the things that attracted me to this was the fact that it wasn't much heavier than my Telecaster, if yeah, at all. Or maybe a yeah. little bit heavier, but yeah, it's it's pretty good. And yours isn't that bad either. No, no, I reckon it's probably it's probably about nine pounds. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, it's like a it's like a telly that's a bit heavier than yeah. Than, Similar to that artist telly that you had. Maybe no, no one knew no, as no, that. No, but that was brutal. Yeah. But, Sounded um, great. Couldn't lift it. <laughs> no, no, exactly. So, yeah, look, you, you know that strapped on. It's quite similar, I think, to the to the PRS, actually. Yeah. I think once you get a certain thickness of uh, mahogany, because uh, I think you'll probably see this is quite a lot thicker than than that, you reckon? Yeah, oh, yeah, def definitely is. Yeah, yeah. yeah so We can ha hold it up to that front camera if you like. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that'll give us some... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, and it's not it's not weight relieved either. There's enough 
uh, Les Paul snobs that talk about, oh, you didn't get a weight relieved one, did you? Where they put a whole lot of these little yeah. cavities in it. it. looks like Swiss cheese. You don't see any of that anyway. Who cares? No, exactly. It's it's weird, but I'm, I'm sure they're saying oh, a real man needs to go to the chiropractor. I'll tell you what. Gig. After Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No. That colour is so cool. Like, Yes, it's called, I, I much it's called prefer that. Bourbon Burst. Yeah. Um, uh, I've so never... as flamboyant as this, mate. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, TVL is absolutely iconic. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love the look of that. It's just... Yeah, I brilliant. smiled when I opened the case because I, I hadn't seen one of these in person before. And yeah. I went, wow, I actually really like this. Yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me of my tally as well. Yeah. Just the, the vibe of it. But uh, No, it's, it's, it's iconic and, yeah. That, that colour is definitely my favourite in terms of that or say like a gold top. I used to love the gold yeah. tops. I've gone off the gold top look. I'm not really too sure why. Um, I, I can appreciate it still, but yeah. that is my favourite out of the three. Like if you're talking about the, the what are they, traditional sunburst? Yeah. Is that what it's called? The, the, the yeah, like red the, and yeah. the slash kind yeah. of like, yeah, exactly. that, that yeah. I much prefer. Yeah, I think um, you like to know that your guitars are made of wood and, and the thing with the gold top is that it's, it's all gold. You can't yeah. see where you can see the grain through. That's beautiful. Yeah, I don't quite know how they how do they do that. They stain it and then I guess put the nitro over the top. But I love that you can see the grain of the mahogany. It almost reminds me of um, someone who's hand painted it with a brush, because if you look in some areas, it's it's almost solid, and yeah. then in other areas it's yeah. not. I, I I'm not really too I sure. I think that's uh, where the filler, the grain filler goes. Oh, okay. Um, on it, but. Uh, Next yeah, no, no, TV Yellow is is absolutely iconic. So, so the story behind that it was for reflections on TV. Yeah, is that how that, on, on black that and white TV? Yeah. Um, white guitars would would bleach and and uh, um, like change the exposure of the film. Yeah, or that's right. Yeah, okay. So it's too much. So um, yeah, so they look white on a black and white TV. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it it's looks uh, so good, I, and it's weird because I never expected to get. Another, well, I wasn't looking for another Les Paul. I borrowed it with the intention to make a video, and I was like, "Yeah, this is good." Yeah, well, again, that that we chalked that one up to we don't find guitars; they find <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, you know, I found two in recent times, and that's kind of disturbing. But I've been doing the the big purge. That I bought yeah. the Telecaster and that. Yeah, and. Uh, but I've also gotten rid of four already from my purge. Oh, so no, that's good, mate. What's your process moving forward? Are there well, any that are hitting the So you, you the do eBay? the good purge and, and I do the big hoard. So stay tuned, <laughs> folks, for hoarders.com. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking a bit about uh, – I've got a few amps that um, uh, I'm not playing. I love them. Yeah. But I just can't justify having them. They should be played. They're mm -hmm. beautiful amps. Yeah, all your so, stuff's good. So um, – I'm thinking I'll I'll move a couple of them along. Guitars aren't as much of a storage issue for me as as amps. Yeah, amps. The there's nowhere to put them other no. than on the floor in a room somewhere. No, you know, like guitars, you can slide them under yeah. things. And I mean, I was thinking of putting a like hang space in my, <laughs> but I've yeah. got my head on them. So uh, no, they should be played. I mean, yeah. it's awful to have this stuff and not play it. So um, yeah, that's. I'm going to have a bit of an amp and pedal purge. Is there anything else you're now looking for in terms of a humbucker guitar? Because you've you've pretty much got one from every brand available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, oh funny. no, 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 no. <laughs> I did see that Fender had re-released uh, the you know the lead one and lead two guitars from back in the eighties. No, they kind of yeah, they're they're pretty funky. Check it out, I'll folks. Put some screenshots up. Yeah. If I find them um, out. Yeah, one one of them's a dual humbucker guitar with a couple of switching options. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, no, nah, look, I think I just again I'm 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 as old as dust or as old AF as my kids call it. I don't know what that means. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, I remember when they came out initially, yeah. and I was thinking, wow, look, you know, it's a Fender. Um, but uh, what's look, it look like? Is it like a Gibson it, style? No, no, guitar? no, no. It's, it's a it's like a Strat. It's a, a, a Double cutaway, offset top horn thing. It looks oh, a bit okay. like a Strat, yeah. but with uh, it's a little slight departures in the in the lines. Hmm. But uh, yeah, one's got two humbuckers, and I think the other one's got two single coils. They're kind of funny looking, like a duo sonic kind of thing. Um, they? No, they're kind of okay. their own thing. All right, I oh, this will be back good. In right? the, back in the eighties, they were a bit sort of modern and <laughs> yeah. sort of a bit uh, avant garde. But hmm. uh, when I saw them, I think it just sort of 
evoked memories for me because I remember. I mean, I was, I've been a fan of music for a lot of years, even before I was a player. Yeah, you know, my my parents used to take us to these Sunday sessions at pubs, and you see guitar, see bands. Yeah, you know, when we were you know, 12, 13, 14. and so, you know, music's you know been a huge part of my life even before I was a player. Yeah, um, I think that's where most most musicians would have that. I think. Well, most yeah. people who start playing guitar because they love the music so much, they want to get into yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. I was the yeah. same. Like I, I always loved, well, even as a kid, I used to buy cassette tapes and stuff. And, yeah. You know, when I could or they were gifts or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've always been so into music it's, as young as I can remember. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's always been good. It's just great. And, and, you know, I love that my kids, like they, they don't play but they love music, you know, yeah. and, you know, they go to um, gigs and festivals and all that sort of stuff. It's it just feeds it feeds you i mean i know other people are into gaming or into yeah whatever but for me you know it's just life makes sense doing this yeah you know? no absolutely and you know to bring up another youtuber who we both know you know cheddar yeah 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 he went from uh, being a gamer to wanting something that just didn't last for six hours and you'd be done yeah you yeah. know or seven or ten hours yeah, however yeah. long the game is he thought yeah i'm gonna start playing guitar because he was already like music so yeah that that's cool to see like that transition over and i i remember when i first started playing i i loved what i was hearing so much i wanted to try and replicate you know yeah play a lick sing a lick i couldn't sing back then and i yeah, probably still yeah. can't but i i couldn't i wasn't doing any of that right yeah. but it was just that i want to try and work out what's going on and and i want to try and sound like that was that mm. same for you like did you oh, hear certain yeah. things you just went oh i really want oh, for sure really want to play for sure now look uh back in the tennis record days yeah. You know, and I used to, <laughs> yeah. My, my dad used to say, Why are the strings crooked on my tennis racket? I'd be going, well, I don't know, Dad. <laughs> it was me digging in, you know. I was, I was probably, you know, playing Steve Ray Vaughan gauges even back then. I just didn't know. Actually, I wasn't playing with my left hand, too. But anyway, um, yeah, I would hear stuff and think, Wow. I remember when I first worked out, uh, I want to hold your hand by the Beatles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, it was just like the best day of my life. It was unreal. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's been a huge part, and that's that's why I can hear a song and I can I just know how to play it. It's just this weird thing I've got where I can visualise where the chords are, and it's just odd. It's yeah. a bit definitely on the spectrum. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. most people can't do that. Like, yeah, you know, I know you've played with someone who has that ability to hear anything and play anything oh yeah yeah look it's uh, i don't know if you want me to name drop anybody <laughs> or not or embarrass you but uh yeah, yeah look there's it's, not many guys out there who can who yeah, can do that it's just that well yeah it's it's weird uh, and and i think that's a weird thing like um when you play with other people and they can't do it you think what? Oh, come on <laughs> yeah but uh it's true yeah. a little bit for everybody like i can hear a blues album and as long as it's in my sort of bag of yeah. Of knowns. In your wheelhouse. I'll be okay. Yeah. And I, I go, okay, I don't know, might not be able to pick the key exactly, but I'll be close yeah. and I can visualize the lick just because I've learned how to listen to things and try to work things out and watch things. And it, you connect dots, but I think with you, it's it's a lot of, it's different. Like you can you can pick the chord shapes you were saying and yeah, all that kind of stuff it's, as well. It's, it's strange. You, you hear it and think, oh, yeah, that's there. Yeah. But I think that's from, see, the trouble with, I mean, YouTube is awesome. Don't get me wrong, and I use it a lot. If I if I need to work out a solo and I listen to it and I can't work it out, I'll, I'll watch YouTube lessons. But when we were learning, there was no YouTube. Yeah. So you, you had to train your ear, and and uh, um, you know work stuff out. And it's funny now because there's some things that I play. I think, oh yeah, that's how I worked it out. But then, then when you see it actually play, you think, wow, it's completely different. Yeah. Um, turns into your own strange hybrid of yeah, way exactly. of doing it over the years, which yeah. is awesome. I, yeah, I, I love that we had that um, just that experimentation and the exploring stuff and mm -hmm. coming up with ideas and um, that were different than than you know the original. But yeah, um, it just it unlocked the neck for us, and so yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy to have grown up in the era that we grew up. Yeah. Where, you know, cassette tapes. I, I remember we used to deliberately run the batteries down so the tape would slow down. Oh, wow. So we could okay. learn stuff. Jeez. And, um, and my dad doesn't watch his channel either, so I can tell you that we used to 
put weights on the record to slow them down too and, you, and burn out the motor on the turntable. Oh, no way. Sorry, Dad. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, we did all that sort of stuff. See, I remember records when I was young. My mum had a, a big collection, but mm. um, I think right around that same time I remember listening to some of that or seeing them, they were kind of getting phased out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and tape was the portable way of getting things around and yeah. then the CDs oh, came in not long after that. But yeah. I never had to learn just via audio. I was lucky enough to have, you know, there was instructional VHS tapes. V- oh, v- yeah, yeah, VHS, Video yeah. cassette tapes for the <laughs> what v- VHS. What is yeah, the H VHS. stand for? Yeah. VHS. We'll, we'll put that I'm on not screen. Sure. Yeah, I don't because know remember that or there was beta. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, yeah, anyway, that never <laughs> worked out so well, I don't no, think. No, no, but... Um, but, yeah, it's just the best resource being able to, like now. Yeah. There's no excuse not to be able to learn something other than yeah. putting your own, putting enough time and effort into yeah. sort of sitting there and working it out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I can't read tab either. That's the other weird yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I try, I try I to look avoid at that, actually. 15, 14, 15, I just can't do it. No. No. It uh, doesn't give you the feel and it doesn't give you the... Yeah, the, that's right. The attack or anything. Yeah. You want to hear it and see it. At least that's the easiest way for me. Yeah. And if yeah. it's a simple t- pentatonic leak, odds are, and it's not too over the top crazy, once you get a few, you can you can work them out. But oh, talk, sure. talking about blues, you've made the transition almost back to blues now, even though you were the rock yeah. god for a good s- five guy. or six years there. Yeah. <laughs> Again. No, it's weird. I, I, I've just been, uh, I've been playing sort of, I guess songs from my youth, uh, 70s rock, but 80s rock and whatever. And it's been fun, but after the last couple of gigs, I've been left with that feeling of this is fun, but it's not really feeding me. Yeah. Um, blues has been my love for so many years. Um, and uh, I'm not getting to play it as often as um, I used to. Mm-hmm. And um i'm just i'm starting to feel it i'm yeah. starting to feel it uh where uh you can play whatever sort of comes into your head or you know change the feel if you want mm-hmm. you know the old key change you know when you toss in the key change it's just sort of like oh yeah. it's, it's like fresh. a horn section just kicked in yeah it's great yeah, it's great you know, it even goes up and, and yeah um the energy goes up and it's fresh so uh yeah i'm i'm really kicking that around thinking what can I do to get back to the blues? Because cool. um, I guess, you know, a lot of ways, remember Clapton, remember through the 80s? There yeah, was some I've stuff. I've got some of those albums. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Phil Collins produced. That's right. You know, where yeah. the sounds might have been pristine, but it was just, he was just making them to buy cocaine, wasn't he, more or less? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, it's yeah. pretty funny listening to that. I was talking to Andy Martin about um, one of the albums. I posted a thing on Instagram a photo of it and he goes there's more synth on that album and keys than there is guitar playing yeah. I was like, you're absolutely right oh. it's in that it's on the same album as uh, it's in the way that you use it oh yeah, the, yeah. that pool movie yeah and, um, yeah yeah it's just funny listening to that side of clapton then when he goes to you know from the cradle it's oh, like welcome home <laughs> what yeah it's so much better oh. <laughs> From the Cradle is 20 years old now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it came out in 1999, I Did think. Did it? Yeah. Wow. That was the, that's what got me into Electric Blues. Did when it I was really? in Michigan. Yeah, I heard that in the car and I wow. said, oh, who, who is this? B.B. King. I didn't know anybody. So yeah. B.B. King's the only name that I really knew. Oh, and John Lee Hooker and a few others, but I knew it wasn't him. Yeah. So, you know, he goes, that's Eric Clapton. I was like, why wow, Eric Clapton sings like that? Yeah. Because I'd never heard him do yeah. that sort of blues. Yeah. It was always the... Tears in Heaven, I'd yeah. heard Unplugged, yeah. which I, I liked Unplug enough at the time, not knowing much about his rest of his catalogue. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, certainly. Um, so then you got back into Cream and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, did you? I, I still preferred his more modern stuff from like oh, the yeah. eight, from the late eighties. He did some. He was getting back into the blues. There's some really great live double c- album, double CDs, double whatever yeah, that yeah. came out, and they're really good. Yeah. Just straight blues albums. Yeah. Um, and the one that he did at the, I think it's the Fillmore, oh, not the Fillmore, sorry, uh, Albert Hall in uh, with oh, Buddy yeah. Guy and Robert Cray. Yes, that's uh, 21 Nights. Yeah, 21 Nights, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that album was, there's a lot of good blues on that and that's oh, where I learned killer. a lot of my little licks yeah. from was on that album. Yeah. I, yeah, I went through that a hundred times on all the blues tracks there and then I was more into that. I, I 
can't really listen to Cream that much. I don't know what it is. I, I find it irritating, uh, which will, prob- probably, everyone will hate, but no, it's just me. Prob- I can't handle rhythm, it. I reckon the rhythm section. Yeah, I think the bass. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I don't want to criticize. For, at its time, it was amazing, and I get oh, it. Oh, incredible. Yeah, but incredible. It, it's not the kind of blues that I like. Yeah, yeah. I like the more, I guess, what most people call the boring yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Well, I think um, more we, controlled we owe stuff. Clapton this huge debt of uh, gratitude because he's the one who started using the, the unwound third string oh, you know so okay. before then all all the guitar uh, electric guitar sets the the g string was wound oh, and wow. so yeah he put a, a lighter string on and you get those classic uh huh. those classic you know cliched blues licks now from him hmm. so there's a great video where he's it's just him and he's talking to this interviewer demonstrating the use of a wow yeah, i've seen that as well. how good is that i'll link it in the cards it, or it's something. Yeah. it's so so good and 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 that's where i say thank you eric Thank you for taking a, a, a music form that Americans had forgotten about. Yeah. You know, it's all the whole British invasion thing. I mean, how cool was that? Yeah, that's what I think you'll be remembered for more yeah. than almost anything. So Muddy Waters was driving trucks and, Yeah, you even B.B. King thanks him for how popular he became after yeah. Eric brought it back. Yeah, kind exactly. Of thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's weird how you need to sort of get reintroduced to your own sort of music. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, we've been on a similar journey, um, you know, albeit that, you know, I'm just a lot older. But I, I sort of came came to it through rock music and then reading interviews in guitar player where they said, oh, you know, I I, I got the Beano album. I'm like, what's the Beano album? And you sort of disappear down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, uh, Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin and mm-hmm. you know, it's all these. All, it all starts with the blues, man. Yeah. I think Keith Richards. There was some soundbite where he just said, "If you don't know the blues, then what are you doing playing rock and roll?" You know, it's yeah. it's the it's the root of it all, and I love it, and I want to get back into it. Yeah, good. Oh, mm. that's great. I think my favorite thing about it is just being able to jam with people. Yeah, you know that that whole knowing the formula of it and how simple it is. Once you get that in your brain, it, it's, it's really easy just to get up and play with. Other, well, it's easy in the sense that it's not an a lot of people, I see comments from all kinds of people who say, oh, I've been playing metal for years and I want to play blues and I find it hard. Yeah. I'm like, you'll probably end up getting better at it quickly than me trying to learn metal after <laughs> after 20 years of playing blues, you know, <laughs> a different dexterity. But I get it. It's, yeah. it. There is that complicated part to it. But for me, I just love the fact that if you know what's going on, you're around good musos. Yeah. It's fun to get up and play. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, the formula is no. the same. No, you know? That's right. Well, it's you, such a great, great style. Yeah, you, know, you introduced me to your mate in um, San Francisco. Yeah, Ed. And we went to Shout play. To what was the bar? It's called Swig. Swig on, on Geary. Geary Street. Yep. Yeah. Sketchy as. Longest running jam night in San Francisco. Is it really? Yeah. 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 It's, it's a good night if you actually get there in one piece. Um, no. <laughs> Sorry, it was. A, I I, wa- <laughs> yeah. I walked from the wrong end of Geary Street. I walked from Van Ness, yeah, uh, all the way down, like, and yeah. it was just getting dark. And I was just thinking, man, I'm not going to get there. No, <laughs> I'm going to end I, up I in the gutter. Thing. And I saw, I saw things, and I just no, just don't eyeball. Just keep your eyes down. <laughs> yeah, just keep walking. Yeah. And I got there, but when I did get there, it's a Sunday night. And the place is jumping and it's packed. Yeah. And there's a horn section who just. So yeah. what, what are you in? A, no worries. And they come up with these amazing horn parts on the fly. Yeah, and it works well and the, the standard's great. And standard's the, the, unbelievable. There's a, uh, like a group of dancers that go there, the ballroom dancers. Were they there the night you were there? Like there's probably uh, like about 10 of them. Really? Yeah, they just dance all night. And they're wow. like really orchestrated. They do the old rock and roll dancing. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're there like every time I've been there, even if it's a three-year gap, they're always there. Far out. Yeah, maybe some different people, but it must be part of like a school yeah. thing or something. That, and I thought that yeah. uh, venues don't encourage those because um, those dancers only drink water. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's a, a great vibe because people are just straight away into it. And they are. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's a Sunday cool. night I'm thinking, haven't you got work tomorrow? But uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It now, was that so jam's cool. great. If you live in San Francisco or you visit it, go to Swig. On a Sunday night. Yeah, on Geary. It's been going forever. I think it's like Ed's one of them. You know, he's been the host for, I guess, probably close to 10 years. Wow. But it's been going for like yeah. 80 years or something over it's the course a, of- It's such yeah. a good vibe. And, and you're right. You can be from 16,000 kilometers away and it's still 145 with a 1625 turnaround. Yeah. Go. And, yeah. uh, and and you're on. So, no, I love that we, 
we all speak the same language. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. My name's Shane. I'm with Dr. Rick. Thanks, folks. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out. And if you want to listen to the uh, the audio only podcast, you can find it on iTunes. Just type in In The Blues or go to InTheBluesPodcast.com. You can listen there for free if you like what we do. You can support the channel by using any of the affiliate links you see in the video description. So thanks again. You're great. See you, folks. See ya.